How's it going everybody? Welcome to part number two of my complete DVD and Blu-ray movie collection right here on the CM42 TV Movie Journal. I hope everybody's doing well. This is supposed to be this kind of like launching series that I decided I'd do here for the brand new movie channel talking about my collection. Um, but then I've, you know, sometimes when I do these Blu-ray collection videos I can do them in one take. And it's always like, okay, there you go, I've done it. But like, I thought to myself, I'll do it in parts this time. We'll take my time through the films. And now I'm thinking, my God, that's like four, <laughs> four videos instead of one. It just seems like more work. But it's going to be good. We did part one. That was one of the first videos. I think it was like second or third video that I posted on this channel. So please check it out. That is part one. That was A through C. And this, my friends, is now D through I on my Blu-ray collection. Um, and we're starting things off with people might get, you know, raise their eyebrows here, we're actually starting with another B, but it's the Dark Knight Trilogy, so that sits in the D section of my Blu-ray collection. And here they are here. The three Dark Knight films, Batman Begins, it kind of you know, progresses in terms of quality of edition. So we have Batman Begins on standard Blu-ray, which I actually love that cover, so I'm pretty happy having that as a normal cover. Then we have the Dark Knight in a slip cover version, this was the first ever Blu-ray I ever got. I got it for Christmas in 2008, and there you see. I always loved that, I love how like, it was the main poster for the slip and then inside was the Joker. We're currently doing a, a Batman watch through, and once we've filmed all those videos it'll be part of the CM42 TV movie journal talking about all the Batman films. And then we have The Dark Knight Rises on Blu-ray Steelbook, this was the first Blu-ray Steelbook I ever got, and I love it. Still to this day it's one of the nicest ones I think. Not only just because of the subtlety of the kind of cowl here, but also with like the rain falling down and stuff on the back. I always think it looks brilliant, so... There you go. The Dark Knight Films on Blu-ray. Alright, carrying on with the Ds here. We have Dazed and Confused. Uh, this is on my two watch list. I've never seen this before, even though I love Richard Linklater. I've seen Everybody Want Some, which at the time I didn't know was supposed to be like a sort of like spiritual sequel to this film. I know this is just like Scream's 70s I think, yeah. It's been, I don't know when the film, I think the film is mid-90s, but it's set in the 70s I believe. I was never, you know, I wasn't around in the 70s believe it or not, so it's not going to be so much like nostalgia for me as it would be, as I'm sure it is to Linklater. But I love all of his films, so I'm sure I'm going to really enjoy it. That was only 3 99 and the HMV one time, great deal. Next up we have Dead Poet Society, I've never seen this one either. This was a purchase from my sister. She read the book and loved it, or has she read the book? I'm not sure, but she watched the film anyway and was like, this is definitely what we need for the collection. I love Robin Williams. I wasn't going to say no to it. There's Dead Poet Society. Deadpool. Uh, I have kind of like, when this first came out, I was like over the moon about it. I read Deadpool comics when I was in high school, I was a fan, had the video game, things like that. But I kind of fell away from it a little bit, as, as we do with certain things. When the film came out, I really liked it, I really liked the sequel. And now when I watch it, I just, I'm much more of like a sort of MCU sort of fan with like Iron Man, Captain America, and the Avengers themselves. This one doesn't quite hold up as much as the other ones. I enjoy that, I still think it's, you know, good and stuff, very well made. I love the Deadpool character, but the jokes don't land as, as well with me as they used to. That could be a sort of age thing, I don't know, but yeah, I don't love it as much as I always did. And I think I did a video in like 2018 or 2019 on my main channel, which is CM42 TV, it was like re-watching Deadpool. And I remember like sitting there thinking like, this is not as good as I remember that. I think like, the thumbnail is me like looking at it like, Mm, not sure about this one, so check that one out if you want some more thoughts on Deadpool on the main channel. God, I forgot I had this one. This is Detroit, and this one was absolutely amazing. This was 2017 or something. Um, I remember seeing this in the cinema and just absolutely freaking out about how good it was. I couldn't believe how deep it was and how much it kind of like affected me and it really sat with me for a while. Um, obviously, John Boyega, I'm such a big Star Wars fan. So it was like a, like a new John Boyega film and he's like the main man and stuff, Will Poulter. Such a great actor and he's such a horrendous character. Um, a great character but a horrendous person in this film. Um, so good, very eye opening, so well made, the acting is unbelievable, the writing, some of the monologues are unbelievable. I've not watched this one since and I picked it up as soon as it was released because it was one of those ones where I saw it in the cinema. This happens sometimes. I go to the cinema and I see a great film and I'm like, that's one for the collection. And this is one of them, so. I don't know. I, I know how heavy it was, you know. I've, I've never like wanted to go back to it because it's it's such a such a journey, but it is great. 
Here we have Die Hard, one of my favourite films of all time, maybe my favourite action film of all time. I talked about this recently in a movie haul video on the main channel. This is a perfect example of how I want to collect my movies, right? I don't, I mean, it's so easy just to go on Amazon, eBay, HMV website, something like that, and just like search what you want and buy it, you know what I mean, easy. But there's something really charming and fun about going to like a charity shop or a used to DVD shop or something, or even going to HMV or FOPA. Like a, like a DVD shop or a Blu-ray shop, a movie shop in general, and there's like a sale on or something, and just finding one of your favourite films and picking up and going, I, I really want this, and, and I want this in my collection. That's what happened with Die Hard. I went to a charity bookshop looking for books, left with no books, just one Blu-ray, I left with Die Hard, and things like that's just fun, you know, like I was never, like I loved Die Hard and I knew I wanted it in my collection, but I never went on Amazon and searched for Die Hard Blu-ray, you know, maybe I saw like a four film set or something, but I never pulled the trigger on it. So seeing it just like randomly by fate that I'm in this shop and it's there, it was like, it was very cheap and you know, you're donated to charity and things like that. All that stuff, I love it. So if ever that happens, I'll definitely add it to my collection of, of one of my favourite films. Here's Django, one of my favourite Tarantino films. Would this be my top three? Pulp Fiction, nah, Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that's my top three Django, uh, top three Tarantino films. How would that, how would the top five round out? I'd probably put Django in there. And then either Jackie Brown or Inglorious Bastards. But there's, there's so many good ones. Um, I do love Kill Bill and Reservoir Dogs and, and all those good ones. But still, um, I love Django. I watched this about a year ago for like the third or fourth time. And it was just as great as I remembered it. It's so well done. It's a typical Tarantino. And uh, Jamie Foxx, DiCaprio, Sam Jackson, Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz in that film is so good. Alright, here's a good one. This is Donnie Darko. I got this in the Arrow Shocktober sale back in October 2020, which is almost a year ago now, which is absolutely crazy. I still look at this as a new Blu-ray. Um, I've had it for a year, and it's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, yes. Um, just a great film, very... I was going to use the word confusing, confusing is the wrong word, it's a thinker for sure. It requires a couple of viewings, I think, anyway, to fully grasp how great it is, but it's so well made. Um, reminded me of like Memento and things like that where like whoa Nightcrawler things like that maybe that's just from the Jalen Hall effect but um, yeah that's the Arrow video uh, edition of that so I enjoyed that one next up we have a film I just watched for the first time that has been my collection for the longest time and that is Drive um, I have always said that I've been a Ryan Gosling I've always been a Ryan Gosling fan and I like Carrie Mulligan as well and I've always liked the look of this film and I think my cousin had it on DVD a few years ago and he kind of like gave me the DVD and I never watched it. And I always knew it was going to be on my list. And then I saw this amazing limited edition version in uh, HMV or FOP one time with this great slipcover. And I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to finally watch it. I know I'm going to like it. And I can confirm I really liked it. It's a good film. It's nothing over the top special. You've seen better. But um, in terms of just a great action film, it's got Oscar Isaac who I really like in it as well. And uh, Ryan Gosling is a hit or a miss in terms of some roles, but sometimes you really, I really like him, and I really like them in Drive. So I definitely would recommend Drive for an easy watch, definitely. This one I literally just watched the other day. It's Dragon Fist. I watched a, a Jackie Chan documentary for, like a very short documentary for the CM42 TV, the main channel, and reacted to it and stuff, and I was like just in the mood to watch Jackie Chan. This has been sitting in the collection for about six or seven months, and it was still in the cellophane unopened and stuff. I bought it in FOP just because I'm a big Jackie Chan fan, but also the artwork I just love. I love that slipcover. And I wanted to see some more classic Jackie Chan, and more Jackie in his prime sort of thing. Recently bought his book, and I loved Dragon Fist. It's just like, you know the way, it's not like what I'm going to go back to all the time, but when you're in the mood for that sort of film, you know, you can't go wrong. Same with this one, Drunken Master. This is one of the first, like, prime Jackie Chan films that I saw. I loved it. Um, I can't remember what one I liked better, because the next one on the list here is The Legend of Drunken Master, which is the sequel, which I didn't even know was the sequel. It's a good few years after. I think this was in the 90s, and this was late 70s. But I did do a video about these two films on the main channel when I first watched them about maybe a year ago or something. Um, I think I called it, like, first time watching Drunken Master and The Legend of... So if you're a fan of Jackie Chan and my videos and stuff, check that one out on the main channel if you can. But there's Drunken Master and the Legend of Drunken Master. Carrying on here. A lot of films start with D in the collection, which is odd. Dumb and Dumber, classic comedy. I loved this one, especially when I was younger um, and when I was like in my early teens and stuff. I really f I found this film hilarious. 
And it's a, I think it's quite hard Blu-ray to come by, you know, so that's why I've never kind of like donated it to charity or given it away or whatever. Because I watched it recently and I wasn't dying as much as I used to be, you know. Um, but I love Jim Carrey, I watch any one of his films as a classic comedy. And as I say, I think the Blu-ray is quite hard to come by now, so it's quite cool to have it. This is a cool one. This is Easy Rider, part of the Criterion Collection. I was in a, a, a Criterion mood. When I was in HMV, I saw this one. I think it may have been cheaper than the other ones. Also, I just love the, the artwork. It's such a big part of it. I talked about this when I, when I kind of updated it in the main channel in like my movie hall at the time. I don't know when, what month it was, but uh, the artwork and the kind of design of the case and the, and the special features and things like that plays such a big part, you know. I wanted a classic film, I wanted a Criterion, and uh, this one just looks really cool, you know. And it's a great film, I watched it twice. I watched it once full time and then I watched it again with the commentary. It is uh, set in the 60s, um, I think, 1969. Is the, yes, 1969 the film came out. I believe it's set in 1960. Um, and it's just about like what life was like for certain people in America at that time. It was really interesting, an interesting watch. And the Criterion version is really cool, obviously. This one's a very new addition to the collection. This is Elf on Blu-ray Steelbook. Elf is one of my favourite films of all time. It is my second favourite Christmas film ever. Um, I watch it every Christmas Eve. Um, definitely my favourite Will Ferrell film. And I've seen Step Brothers. Um, and I have Step Brothers in the collection. And yes, I, I've been wanting a steelbook just for that artwork for the longest time. I saw it at a really good price on Amazon. Brand new, still in the, in the cellophane. And also it comes in like a mad... It comes in different languages. This is in French as well. And I believe it's also in uh, Spanish. Yes, Spanish as well at the back. I don't know why. It says Le Lutan, um, which is obviously the French translation for Elf, I guess. So it's going to be interesting watching that version. I'm not going to watch the French version, but watching it from this Blu-ray Steelbook this coming Christmas, which is absolutely ridiculous that the fact we're nearly there. Here is Enter the Dragon. Great film. Bruce Lee. I believe this is Bruce Lee's last film before he died. Um, I watched, I watched that, a film about... Bruce Lee's life, and I can't remember for the life of me what the name of the film was because I really wanted it for my collection. I really liked it. That's a really cool disc. No inside artwork, unfortunately. But there's a really cool, um, I don't know if it's like a special edition or if it's a Criterion on 88 films or if it's a steelbook, but there's a really cool edition I saw in HMV recently of Enter the Dragon. And I wasn't quite justified to get it because I've already got the standard version, but maybe one day I'll upgrade it. But this is one of those films I watched and I just was like, I loved that. I needed it for the collection and I immediately went online and bought it, you know, so that shows you how much I enjoyed that one. Enter the Dragon. This one is such an underrated film and it is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. When I first watched this film I said that's one of my favourite films ever, you know, and every time I go back to it I'm just reminded of it. I forget about it all the time, you know, I forget when, when I'm talking about my favourite films and I'm giving my top 10. I actually sat at the dinner table with my family recently. And, well, I do it all the time, but like, we had this conversation recently and about like just I randomly started talking about my favourite films and I just totally forgot about it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know why. It's such a great film, um, an amazing cast and I always you know, link this and the Truman Show together because it's like Jim Carrey like trapped in a certain way. Um, I don't know, I just think it's great and it's so underrated and maybe one of the best films ever made, you know, like quality wise, you know. I love the fact I've got this in the collection, this is Fantastic Four. And I watched this a lot when I was younger, right? I really liked the the, the, the Thing character and Mr. Fantastic and things like that. Um, and the Human Torch, which it took me until like 2018 to realise it was Chris Evans, you know what I mean? I always laugh when I see it. And this was in Poundland with a really cool slipcover. And I was like, I'm going to get it. I've not watched it since I got it. I had got this for like maybe a year or something. Um, it's just more of like a nostalgia kick anyway. And every time I go to like, sometimes I have like blurry clear outs and stuff. I never want to get rid of it because it's like... It's a nostalgia kick and I know one time I'll finally go back to it and maybe it will be soon actually and I'll, um, I'll really be grateful that I've still got it in the collection because it is a nostalgia kick. It's like those old Spider-Man films, you know, the Tobey Maguire. Technically they're not quite as good as the Marvel, the new Marvel stuff but it's like that nostalgia kick to it, you know. Um, same with like the Tim Burton Batmans and stuff, you watch them and you're just like, oh these are so good. So yeah, maybe that's the same reason I've got Fantastic Four. Here we have Fargo. Coen Brothers film, love this one, I've actually not seen the TV series, but I do love this film, I've seen it like three or four times, a homespun murder story, and I couldn't believe the plot when I first watched it, I was like, it's absolutely ridiculous, and it's so good, it's a great winter movie, not a Christmas movie, but it's great to watch in like November or January or something, because of all the snow, and they're all like cold all the time and stuff, it just is, good vibe for this sort of time of year that we're approaching, so maybe I'll watch Fargo again, 
in the kind of upcoming winter months Isn't it crazy that we're nearly in the really deep winter months again? We have to get through autumn first, we enjoy autumn Right here we have Fight Club, I always make the joke every single time I do one of these Blu-ray collection videos that it's like it's a shame we can't talk about it and I'll make that joke again right now I love Fight Club Here's Fighting With My Family now yes, I did love this film, obviously I'm such a big wrestling fan and stuff, I saw this in the like VIP cinema experience at City World. Where you get these big chairs, you get your dinner made for you, it's like a buffet kind of style. You get unlimited drinks, unlimited popcorn, unlimited hot dogs. You can just take into the cinema and come back out and get a roll and go back in, you get your private toilet. You have the table next to you, you get the reclining seat. Just an amazing experience and I've only done it once. I was very close to doing it recently, but because of the COVID restrictions, they weren't offering dinner. And I thought part of the experience is getting the food, you know, so when, when they, I think they will start now, I think it's uh, now we're in September, they are starting again. Um, but once that's back up and running and there's a big film, I'll definitely go back and do that. But I saw Fighting With My Family in that style and I loved it. Um, and I would have, I mean, I like the film. I don't know if I would have added it to the collection if it wasn't like a big wrestling film, you know, but I do love it anyway. I've not watched it since, but I did really like it. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, three ninety nine, great deal, great summer film. I actually didn't watch it this summer, but you can watch it in the springtime as well. I suppose you can watch it anytime. It's Ferris Bueller. It's a fun film. Also love the artwork. I feel like that's not like the normal artwork. Maybe I'm wrong there. It looks like a kind of special edition, even though it's not. But it just looks like it. The Florida Project. This was another one that I watched, and I was just like, I need to get that to the collection. It's so underrated. Nobody saw it. And um, I have such like a, like a soft spot for like Florida and Orlando and things like that and like the wonder of what those theme parks can do and things like that, you know, so it's like the, the, the kind of sad reality of this mother who can't provide for her child who lives directly behind Disney, I think it is, um, and they watch the fireworks all the time and Willem Dafoe is amazing in that film. It's a really good one. Underrated for sure. Here's the game. This film was in the box office the day I was born and that's why uh, my parents bought me it for my 21st birthday I believe and I've still never seen it but uh, I, I'm looking forward to it, I like Michael Douglas and I will get to it eventually. And here is Going In Style, this was another one, it's just a total fun film, I didn't like seek this one, this was in, in Poundland and I was like, I loved that film when I saw it in the cinema. Um, it's nothing special, it's nothing you know, you're going to go back to all the time, but it's just good fun. I love Morgan Freeman, I love Michael Caine, I didn't know much about Alan Arkin if I'm honest, um, but he was really good too. So definitely one to get back to, Going In Style. There we go, we nearly finished last pile here. Um, here is a really cool edition, one of, the, one of my favourite... Um, covers art pieces in my entire collection and this is the brand new Grand Budapest Hotel Criterion release it came out last year this is Spine 1025 uh, I just love this film to bits look at that artwork um, when I was doing the Good Bit podcast back at the start of the year um, I was my time, it was my like week to pick a film and I just got this from HMV.com and I was like to my, to my co-host Aaron which I believe the good bit is going to become a feature to this channel. We have to watch Grand Budapest because I just got this brand new edition. Look at that. Um, and it's just a joy. It's just a joy to watch all the time. Here is all the special features that you get inside. I'm not going to pull it out right now. But maybe next time I do watch Grand Budapest and I make a video about it, I'll go through all this. But honestly, man, such a joy to watch every single time. It makes me laugh, makes me smile. It flies by, you know. It's not like a chore. Such a good one. Such a good film. Here we have The Greatest Showman, I do love The Greatest Showman, I love the soundtrack more than I love the film but it was nice to hear Zac Efron sing again and I do like Hugh Jackman so uh, do this like kind of like family film, Greatest Showman so I'm very happy to have it Here's Green Book, I believe this was like my film of the year 2018 or 2019 whenever it came out it can't be 2019 because it was Endgame but this was definitely one of them and um, I know this was the film I wanted to win the Oscar for Best Picture and then when it did I was so over the moon such a great film an underrated story Marsha Halali and Viggo Mortensen um, brilliant relationship brilliant writing so good can you see this is like a, like a, like a elite premium Blu-ray collection here it's one of the best films we get and speaking of the best films grown ups ladies and gents it's again, it's a comfort film, it's like a family film uh, It's something you need to, I've not, to be fair, I've not watched it in a long time And I was going to say, it's the sort of film you can just throw on But I've not thrown it on in ages, you know So um, maybe I will at some point, I always do enjoy it when it's on though I did like the second one as well, it wasn't as good, but it was funny 
Here's Hairspray, I always love this Blu-ray edition, it's so heavy, because it's a two disc And it just feels special, you know? Um, I have such a soft spot for Hairspray, like I did it as a show when I was younger and stuff, and I was in it and um, I love the musical, I love the songs, I love the, I love all the soundtrack um, It's just a, it's such a special film and a soft spot that I have for that musical and now here we have eight films in one. <laughs> here is the Harry Potter and fant oh, in fact ten films in one. Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts ten film Wizarding World collection. This is what I'm kind of watching through all the Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts films um, because I am currently reading the books. I just finished Order of the Phoenix yesterday. <sighs> Get a bit dusty. Um, and this is just I got this in lockdown. I think the first lockdown we saw it at a good price. And the Harry Potter films were always something that I wanted in the collection. So. All the Harry Potter films and the two Fantastic Beasts films all in this big set. So I'm very happy to own all those films. Let's get this pile here. Ugh. Last one, last pile for this particular part. I mentioned it earlier, The Hateful Eight, my second favourite Tarantino film, one of my favourite cinema experiences of all time. Um, because something happened with, with Tarantino in like Cine World and they didn't want to show his film on the original way it was shot and stuff, so we had to go to like an independent cinema, went to like the West End of Glasgow and it was like this abandoned cinema that no one went to and stuff, it was so good. And it was like a January, so it was all cold and stuff, like, and that kind of goes to the, to kind of one of the themes of the film and stuff. I love it, it's one of my favourites. The Hateful Eight. Here is Headers with Christian Slater and Winona Ryder. Uh, this is still in the cellophane, again got this in the October sale last October, I can't believe I've had this for a year. Um, it feels like just yesterday I was talking about this in a Blu-ray update on the main channel, but it's an Arrow video release, still in the cell of fame, we'll get to it at some point. Here is Hell or High Water, an underrated film and a forgotten film from 2016. I watched this in the cinema, again, immediately went and bought it on Blu-ray as soon as it came out, and I've not watched it since. Ben Foster, I believe, Ben Foster, Chris Pine, Jeff Bridges. Um, very good film. Really good. Here we have High School Musical 3, uh, I was had to double take there because I remembered I don't have High School Musical 1 or 2 in the collection which is not good at all. But the other day I posted a video on the main channel um, about, it was like an unnecessary censorship video for High School Musical and I talked about my love for it and why I like it so much. And there will be a special sort of video here on the, on the movie journal, now that I've got this channel to talk about any movie I want, where I talk about my love for the High School Musical film, so there you go. I think the third one's the only one that came out in Blu-ray anyway, so I was gutted about that. Hot Fuzz, classic Edgar Wright, um, look forward to getting to it, still in the cell of fame, just did a video about Edgar Wright on the main channel, reacted to a kind of short documentary made by a, a channel called Every Frame a Painting, um, yeah, good stuff, check that out on the main channel if you can, Home Alone 1 and 2 double pack, um, two of my favourite films of all time, my favourite Christmas film of all time is Home Alone and Home Alone 2, always kind of brand them together as one and I kind of solidified that in my collection because it came as a double pack and not like a kind of like quadrilogy or whatever. So I'm looking forward to December again so we can watch them for the 8th millionth time. Here is my most recent Blu-ray release that I've got in my collection, or Blu-ray pickup I should say, The Incredible Hulk, the Edward Norton film from 2008 because I'm doing this MCU watch through which I'll start posting very soon on, on the movie journal, the videos for that but um, yeah, obviously because of all the kind of disputes between Mark Ruffalo and the director and Edward Norton and things like that, um, it's kind of removed from canon a little bit and it's not on Disney Plus and all that stuff, but it's still important, it's still part of the journey, it's still part of the MCU. There's, I'm going to talk about this in the video, but there's parts in the film that I was just like, why is this not talked about? I really enjoyed it. So there you go, I watched that last night. Need to watch my time here because we're, we're running low. And Glorious Bastards, again mis mentioned it earlier, Always adore it every single time I watch it. Again, Christoph Waltz, amazing in this film too. Um, he's become one of my favourite kind of like, when I see Christoph Waltz in a Tarantino film, I'm like, oh yes, we're going to get some good stuff there. But it's a classic. Here's a modern classic, Inside Out. Look at the artwork, so cool. Only watched it one time, but it's one of those ones where I was like, it's definitely getting added to the collection. An amazing Disney film. And, um, doop. Going to check it out again soon. But it's always funny that Disney Plus is a thing, I'm always like hesitant to go to them on Disney Plus because I have the Blu-ray, but then I never, you know, pull the trigger and, you know, put the Blu-ray in the player anyway. Here's Inkheart. I've never seen this before, I don't know what it's about, but my sister loves this, and uh, she saw it in the Pound, Shot in Poundland one time and freaked out. So, she also just bought the books, all three of them, which look amazing. 
And last but not least, in part two in this video, Isle of Dogs, another great Wes Anderson film. Reminds me a lot of Fantastic Mr. Fox for obvious reasons, but I actually prefer this film, I think, because Fantastic Mr. Fox isn't in my collection and Isle of Dogs is. Look at that. Such a cool um, release and stuff, such good artwork, but yeah, I love it. Uh, great cinema experience as well with that one. So there you go. That's part two. That was D through I. And coming up next is going to be J through uh, R. Yes, J through R is going to be the next part. Part three coming soon here on the CM42 TV Movie Journal. Thanks for watching this one. Take care of yourselves. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you all next time.